This is Ian Pretty from the Retro Computer Shack. In this video, we'll have a look at the ZX Diag cart from Byte Delight. This is a super quality, very powerful diagnostics board, um, hardware and software. Uh, you've got the ZX Diagnostics software built into the ROM from Brendan Alford, and you've got blue LEDs to show various status indicators for these signals. Uh, the red LEDs show the data bit line 0 to 7 and the green LEDs show the voltages on the board. Superb board. Um, it's also available in kit form. Um, superb quality CP, uh, PCB as well. The surface mount components have already, have already been fitted. Um, everything comes up in individual packs, nice and neat. And all the components are in individual bags and uh, clearly labelled. So you can buy it in kit form as well if you want to save a bit of money and have the satisfaction of building it yourself. Um, this is separate, it doesn't come with the board, but more recently there's also a file available on the internet to download and print this 3D uh, plastic frame for the board. This is, I've put the rubber feet on as well, three rubber feet. I printed this on um, a Creality end of S1 Pro with um, red PLA filament and it really does come out absolutely superb. There's four little lugs on the side which basically allow you to clip the board in place. I'm not going to do it now because I need it out but uh, basically you just fit the board in and push it down and it clips in place and really does look superb and gives the board a bit more protection. So that's something extra you can do if you like. I've also created uh, a PDF version of Brendan Alford's uh, original text online for the uh, ZX Diagnostics one with, with uh, Brendan's permission. Um, basically it's an A4 formatted and there's some additional uh, information in which we're going to use with this video. Um, this is um, printed in A5 booklet form but it also prints uh, superbly in um, A4 form if you want to bind it as well. So a quick look at the uh, the board before we uh, continue. This is a ZX Spectrum 48K board. I've removed all the ICs and socketed it, put sockets in so I can take the chips out very easily for test purposes. It's got the Gosh Wonderful ROM version 133 fitted. That's, I'm not going to go into that, it's too much, that's a separate subject in itself. It's basically a superb replacement uh, ZX Spectrum ROM with all the bugs removed, some extra commands and it has a tokenizer which means you can enter all the commands in letter by letter just like you can on the uh, plus three machines uh, which is much more convenient than the normal input method. There's the um, switch mode power regulator as well, that's been um, voltage regulator that's been replaced that doesn't generate any heat so you don't, don't need a heat sink uh, but the biggest difference is this um, ULA replacement this has got this superb uh, VLA82 ULA from V-Retro it's not just a replacement ULA but um, also gives you superb quality RGB video out which you'll have never seen before on a ZX Spectrum 48k anyway um, it's available in two forms. One is uh, a soldering form that replaces the, modu uh, the modulator and this is the clip-on form which basically clips on the end of the modulator and when you fit the board in a case it just traps it in place and keeps it uh, fixed firmly. Um, the reason I'm using that is because we're going to feed the RGB out with my SCART lead into the OSSC SCART to uh, HDMI video converter just so we can get a good uh, quality picture on the screen which will look much better on the video right so we'll connect that up so I put some power in connect the RGB and I'm going to fit the board into this 90 degree port adapter basically just so uh, we can see the LED lights and the screen together otherwise we wouldn't be able to uh, wouldn't be able to see those right so this is a fully working ZX Spectrum board so I'm going to switch it on 
and we'll look at the lights first you can see the countdown the leds and then should go out that's showing no faults on the lower run so if we go up to the software side and it goes through various tests first of all it's testing the lower 16k ram which has passed um, it's passed on the rom now it's checking upper ram which it does four different tests which is the same as it does on the lower ram and it's passed those so now let's just go in a little bit it's uh, testing interrupts and you'll see the data lines are flashing while it does that as well and then almost finished there finishing the interrupts now now it's just testing the ROM paging and then that should pass very quickly and it should come back to the spectrum screen then just the spectrum logo once it's done that which it has it resets so that's passed that board's perfectly okay so what I'm going to do now is just generate um, a lower RAM fault by removing one of the lower RAM chips um, Actually, before I do that, it might be useful to show you that tool, which is quite quite a useful tool. It's uh, a Weir uh, one two seven four five six, um, which is basically a, a chip lifting tool. It's a, a flat bladed screwdriver with a curved end, and it's notched out, and it's just very handy for lifting chips. So I'll switch that computer off, and we're going to lift IC six out. You can't see the numbering on the board so I'll just show you on the board layout so we've lifted the end one which is basically the IC6 so we'll switch the computer back on um, but just looking at the LEDs first because it should show us a lower ROM failure just from the LED without even looking at the screen this is very useful in lower RAM because if you don't get a display um, if all the RAM's faulty or too much of it is faulty to get a display, you'll see a RAM fault in the uh, it, only lower RAM on the data lines there. Now we're showing data bit zero is come back on, so that's showing a fault. If we come back up to the actual screen, as you can see, it's showing RAM fail zero, which matches data bit zero as well, um, and also the bands show as well. Um, from the top to bottom it's data bit zero one two three four five six seven as you can see that's red which matches with data bit zero so that works out perfect and it's found that uh, found that faulty ram chip so oh actually I'll just show you how to find the ic from the data bit that would be helpful because it's not shown on the screen in the um, diagnostics rom manual which i mentioned earlier um, if you look at the chart there on page three, on page two, um, this is not relevant for an issue one board. Incidentally, all the other boards it's fine, but not for an issue one. I'll just show you that. So the chips are in a separate place on an issue one board, um, so you need to look at those for the locations there, which is different. But we're using a, a six A board, so we're looking at uh, as I'd expect from forty eight K. We're showing an error. Of zero data bit error zero so zero is IC6 and as you remember we lifted that's IC there on the end which as you can see is IC6 so it's uh, diagnosed that perfectly so I'll switch um, switch that off put that RAM chip back in I'm not using any anti-static measures for this one it's just not practical um, normally I would do. Um, now we're going to lift out that IC there which is IC 18 okay so if we switch that on now even though we generated a fault on the upper RAM you won't see it on the data bit lines because that only reflects a RAM fault on the lower RAM and we're now checking uh, we've now uh, created a fault on the upper RAM so we need to go to the screen to uh, find out where that error is so it's passed the lower RAM test it's passed the ROM test and it's failed on the upper RAM test so it's just going through those and when it's gone far enough it should uh, find find the faulty IC which it has and as you can see it's showing uh, check the following ICs IC18 
and if you remember I see 18 we remove there and if you look on the chart again I see 18 I'm only showing you the chart because you can't see the uh, the legends on the IC on the PCB so you correctly uh, identified that um, ROM in the the upper uh, RAM uh, sorry the uh, failure in the upper RAM so I'll switch that off pop that IC back in and I'm just going to plug in a little keyboard now because uh, we need to press keys to do these tests so I'll plug that in and move that out of the way because we're only interested in the screen uh, display now so I'll just show you a few of the um, the other tests uh, I'm not going to go through everything because uh, you can do this yourself um, but there's a few things that are quite useful so I'm going to switch the computer on holding down the space holding down the space key and that brings up the uh, the test card or the test screen and um, I'll just switch that sound off pressing Q just silences the uh, the sound that's obviously testing the sound and um, the test cards very handy for me with RGB SCART leads uh, testing them to make sure the actual colors are correct um, but also you can use it for when if you're using the composite video out if you are or the RF out on the board you can use it for uh, tweaking the uh, the various color pots if they have it on the board this one doesn't it's a 6a board but you can see then uh, that the color and you can adjust it while you're looking at the color that's the uh, test card quickly show you the salt test so I switched it off I'm going to hold the S for sugar or S for salt test and let that go and then it brings up the soap test screen this is uh, very handy this if you just repaired a board and you want to leave it um, on for a while to burn it in as they call it to, to test it for a while to let everything heat up it basically goes through all the tests and tells you how many iterations or how many tests it's completed if it doesn't find an error it will just continue running through those so you can leave it on as, as long as you like um, if it does find a fa uh, an error, it will, will stop. But as you can see, it's done one test. Now it's uh, repeating itself. And this time it shows it's on test two or iteration two. So excellent test that to soak test board. Switch that off. Switch it back on, pressing the U key, U for ULA. And this brings up the uh, ULA test. Um, I'm not I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in this briefly there's lots more information in the the book about the ULA test but uh, basically if it's working right we should get a nice smooth movement of the color bar left and right which we are doing pressing the one key numeric one outputs the sound to the mic port we don't hear that because it's coming from the mic port uh, pressing number two outputs a tone to the ear port three test the border generation which it's uh, it is doing uh, four test uh, screen switching which is on the 128k board we'll miss that one so five um, test ULA port addressing so we should get a, a green flashing border which we do so that's working okay I'll switch that off um, switch it on again pressing the K key K for keyboard and this brings up a very useful uh, keyboard test to test the uh, keyboard membrane as you can see the K key is already highlighted because I've had it pressed down but basically pressing keys on the keyboard shows the working so uh, if they're not if you see any keys not lighting up then you know it's possibly a, a keyboard membrane problem or the keyboard diodes uh, or whatever but it's a good test for that switch that off one more I'll just show you which is the memory browser press the M key when switch it on M for memory and then you get a memory browser which can be used to, uh, to, to check uh, various data in memory I'm not going to go into that uh, much more because you can download the manual and uh, go through all those tests there's lots more in there I think that's about it for this uh, video I do hope you find that useful thanks for watching and I'll uh, be back soon